Lab Electronics, and on the bench today, I have a cool little 6BQ5 push-pull amplifier that I recently picked up at a swap meet. This thing is actually made by a company called Precision Electronics. It's the model S10. I've never ran across one before, but what I found was interesting is it's actually licensed by Western Electric. So I bet you this is a really high quality piece. So let's go over the chassis, see how this thing's built, and then I'll tell you what's wrong with it and what I plan to do. Here's the front panel of the little S10 amplifier made by Precision Electronics. Controls lineup, we have microphone gain, and then we have like a panning pod for auxiliary or phonograph. I'll show you those inputs on the back. Then a simple tone and your on off switch. The tubes, you can see a nice pair of Sylvania 6BQ5s. This is your idiot light in between. A 6EU7 is the preamp plus phase inverter. And back here is a 6V4 rectifier. It's got the original power transformer, an output transformer, and electrolytic cap. Let me flip it around. Now right, here we are backside. There's that tube layout that I just told you about. A little bit of rust around the fuse holder. I don't know why it's just around that fuse holder. It's kind of strange. It's got multiple taps for speaker outputs. And then these, I think, were for PA speakers. So these are your higher voltage tap. You can see it says 25 and 70 volts. I'm guessing it goes to those. Here's your inputs. So that panning pot on the front I was telling you about for auxiliary or phono, well, there they are. Okay, and then there is your microphone input. So I'm guessing the mic goes to a separate preamp section than these two do. But I don't plan on maintaining this functionality. Let's go back to the front panel real quick and I'll tell you what I'd like to do. So I'd like to maintain this front panel because I think it's very cool and vintage, but I don't want to maintain this panning control. I want to use this as a standard little guitar amp. Somebody probably love it for recording. So what my plan is, is the mic input will be our volume. We'll use this pot as treble, and this pot will be bass. And that way we can get the full tone quality out of those 6BQ5s run push-pull. So here's where it gets good. When I picked this amp up, the guy told me that it was motorboating really bad, and he had put in some caps. Yep, he sure did. You can see a lot of them here have been added, but unfortunately he paralleled them right on top of the old bad filter cap, which is a no-no, because if that guy's leaking, it's still going to draw down your power supply. And if you look here, you can see that he installed a new 9-pin socket for one of the 6BQ5s and did a very lovely job. Uh, and ratty as you can see but what I'm going to do is remove this socket and replace it with the same type that it originally had so that will solve that problem now let's fire this thing up and see if it's motorboating so you can see what that's like before I do the repair now here we go I'm going to fire up the amp now I have a speaker hooked up so we can hear the motorboating and I've got my scope set up over here so we can also see it. All right, so the amp's on. Let's give it a few seconds here to warm up and get ready for the show. Here she comes. And there's the motorboat in. I can turn the mic gain all the way down. You can see it continues to do it. There's that auxiliary to phono pan. No effect. Now the tone seems to have some effect on it. Now what would happen if I just pulled out the 6EU7? Still there. So my guess is is the motor boating has something to do with the power supply. The power supply, as you saw, there was an attempted repair, which wasn't done correctly, and that's probably the power supply going boing, 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 causing the motorboating. 
So I thought it'd be a good idea to take a look at the power supply like I was discussing earlier to see if it is fluctuating causing the motor boating. I also noticed this isn't that nice? Just kind of hanging in there. You know, there's only like 400 volts there, right? Nothing to worry about. Anyway, here is the power supply. I have my meter connected to one side of the output transformer going to the first 6PQ5. So I just plugged it in. And let's watch the power supply on my little meter right here. Here she comes. And there's the motor boating. You can see that's jumping around, which I would expect, because that is actually connected to the output transformer winding going to that 6PQ5. Now, let's swing it up to the other 6PQ5 that has the beautiful uh, wiring on the tube socket. We'll plug it in again. Wait for things to warm up. There's the motor boating. But do you see what I see? I don't see any voltage on that lead. So more than likely, it's probably a bad output transformer. Doesn't that suck? All right, so the positive lead or the red wire right there from the output transformer squirrels up here to this mess, okay? And it's going to that pin. Take my meteoroid, go to ohms. I'm at 2K. You can see there's no continuity. I'm going to go over to the other one where we saw voltage. And look at there. About 147 ohms. So unfortunately, the blue wire that goes to that side of the output transformer has an open winding. So I guess I won't be fixing the SAMP right now. Well, that sure threw a wrench in my plans to show you guys how to repair a motor boating amp. Because now it's just turned into a major project, right? It's going to need new output transformer, obviously new filter cap, and probably some pretty intense work to get everything else back where it should be. So I'm going to cover that in a separate video. But the question of the day is, did that guy that sold me this amp know that it had a bad output transformer? That lead was going right to that tube socket. And most of these guys are into radio restoration he saw a D-Lab coming. <laughs> oh well, I'll make it right and I'll make it better, but not in this video. Hope you enjoyed it.